Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with another Rupan movie reaction. Today I'm going to react to uh, Rupan 3 uh, Fujiko Mine's Lie. Now um, again this is like a continuation I guess from the previous one which was Ishikagoyama's Spray of Blood. Like in Ishikagoyama's Spray of Blood we kind of saw uh, you know little uh, like, we, like we can understand that it is like a continuation of uh, Jigen's Gravestone because you know like we saw like you know stuff like uh, from the previous movie like you know like when uh, Yael was standing in front of the graves and we also saw uh, Zenigata coming in so I'm guessing this is again another continuation of the previous one and uh, let's say this is the last one I think and yeah like I really love this style of like you know storytelling and this the way it actually goes and I loved both uh, Jigen's gravestone and um, uh, Ishikawa spray of blood both of them were really best in their own way you know like the previous one which was uh, uh spray of blood uh i loved the action parts and the uh, jigen's gravestone i loved the storytelling part so let's see like you know what i like about this movie i'm sure i love it because it's kind of the same i'm guessing same people same uh, animation studio and everything and the atmosphere will also be the same so yeah this i'm sure this is more focused on fujiko so let's see how this goes so yeah without further ado let's get started this is my reaction to fujiko mine's lie i'll be putting the subtitles and the timer over here sync it to whichever is your preference and let's get started all right so here's the countdown three two one go all right Hmm. Each twelve. Okay. Oh, it's minute. Gene. Kill people. <laughs> Whoa, is it in the middle of the desert? Like, what? Allergy. That's their house? Is in the middle of the desert? What the hell? There's nothing here. It's oh wow, these people look dangerous. Uh, Fujiko Mina's lie. Oh, what the. Uh... Randy He's been targeted by someone Okay, yeah, these people are contract killers I'm guessing Meet me in an hour. An hour? Like how the hell will we, they be able to get out within an hour? And he's burning this place. That means this place probably has something that can... What is that? Okay. I love the villains in these. You know, like, I'm sure this... Oh my god. Oh, okay. Well.
Oh, what? Binkum. Okay. Oh, there you go. They tracked him. Yeah, but they're trying to find the... Oh, no, he's here. Oh, run, dude. What the hell? Money. What? Whoa. What the hell? What is happening? Is this... Oh. This won't work. I think the money is probably no, I don't I don't know. I was going to say the money is probably here, but he's blowing the place up, so I I don't think the money is here. Oh my God. Something must be with the house. I'm sure of it. Why was he trying to burn it? You know, he destroyed the house and he's in inside it even. Like, why? He could have just run away or... Damn, this is Jigen? <laughs> Gold free mining. Oh. <laughs> is he a butler or something? Yeah, I think so. A waiter. Oh! It's a bug, isn't it? Yeah, it's a bug. A listening device. <laughs> Alright, Dave. Lot! Oh, that guy. Embezz- oh. <gasps> Fuck! Oh, wow. Do they know that it's Fujiko? Ah! <laughs> Wait, so was Fujiko actually working for them to get the money herself? I'm sure Fujiko realizes what's happening, but she's not telling it to the son. Oh no, who is this? Oh wow, it's... What was his name? This thing, he eats this and throws something out of his mouth, what the hell? Whoa. Oh no, he He thinks it's with the it's, he thinks it's with the sun. Yeah, what the hell is this? He What the hell is this? This is Wait, he knows? What
so it's like a hypnotizing hypnotizing something wait the sun knows oh jigan there you go Okay. All right. Maybe he doesn't know. Binka, that was his name, yeah. <laughs> what the? <laughs> well, Jigan. Okay, so... different life oh he has a heart okay yeah i was thinking shuji was actually trying for to get that Oh yeah, the heart, yeah. 500 million, damn, that's a... Oh, okay, as... Uh, <laughs> um, put down a gun, please. Hmm. Yeah. Wait, he Oh, he he's going to hire them or something. Yeah. Yeah. He probably knows, yeah. Why is she trying to hide that? Probably because of his heart transplant, because she thinks that he needs someone. I don't know, okay, let's wait. Hmm. Hmm. So this is the guy who calls all the shots. Oh, it's Rupan, actually. I think so. Um, no, maybe not. I thought, okay. Never mind. 
Oh no, the, it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the first part. Oh. Oh no. Wait a minute. It's him. How the hell does he does this? How does he do this? Like what the hell? Oh. Okay. Oh, great. What? Whoa, you know, what the hell? Oh, what is wrong with this guy? This guy is like, not, he doesn't do yo. Damn the glass! Ah, oh, great. Um... Okay. Wow. Um. Whoa. <laughs> wow. That's what he was doing, actually. Okay. Wow. Seat belt. Put on your seat belt. Oh no. A train. Yeah, a train is coming. Okay. Ooh. Up. Ah. Okay. <laughs> Ruban is caught up. <laughs> up! Ah! Yo! <laughs> up! Oh boy!
I don't nothing happens to him like when, when shot like <laughs> yeah what is this this is a weird ability what is this oh so this is like a Fruit, yeah, it is that thing that he uses. Up. <laughs> it is some kind of a drug or something. Yeah, you, you need to do something about that. Maybe wear a gas mask or something. I don't know. That'll help probably. Okay, enough of revenge. Yeah. What the? Oh my god. Um <laughs> Great. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. This get. Well, the thing that he's talking about revenge, I, I'm still not able to understand what the hell Fujiko is thinking about. Mm. Oh. Up! Up! <coughs> Great, wow.
Whoa, what is this place? Oh, this is that. Okay. Uh, the bomb place. Okay. Yeah, what is actually going on? Yeah. What is that? Oh no, he called the police. What the hell? Well, I guess, yeah, he, he was. Oh. Oh. Well, I think they're gone. Wait, she's gone. The, the kid is here. Or, or is she still here? Maybe she's behind the door or something. I don't know. Or maybe underneath the bed. Oh, there she is. Oh, and she's in the car. Okay. Wait, she's following the... what? Oh, okay, it was our boy. Oh no. Took the kid with him. Like, what did Rupan find in that, um, you know, like, the thing? Alright, so, the thing here is, it seems Fujiko is, I don't know, like, like, the name of the movie is Fujiko Mine's Lie, so I'm guessing she is lying in some way or the other. So, that now the question is, which part is the lie? The part that she's doing this for him? The kid or the part that uh, she's doing it for the money? Which one is the lie? Or is it something completely else? Okay. Okay, great. Is he, is he drugged or something? What? Why is he... No, he... Oh, great. Wow. Oh! Oh, no! Okay. Oh. <laughs> the took all right now they need to wait what? how was he oh, okay he took a disguise Embezzled. Uh. 
Oh, very good. Should we give you a medal? What is this guy even saying? Because of them, the dad died, and he has the gall to say that? Wow! Oh, great. Damn, this, I, I think this guy will, is probably like some kind of a, I don't know, like, yeah, he's always kept in muzzles and everything, you know, he's probably like some victim of some kind of experimentation or something, he looks like that, like these fruits that he eats. Oh god. Oh. Okay, yeah, it is some kind of a drug or something that he uses. That makes people say what he's thinking. Maybe a truth serum or something, you know? It might be something like that. Is this Mamoru Miyano's voice? I'll have to check it out. Oh! Yeah. Come on, bike him or something. Ugh. Oh. Okay, yeah, shut up. Yeah, I, that's what I said, gas mask. You need that. Oh my God. I think it is Mamoru Minan's voice. I don't think it will work. Let's. Oh. Whoa! Oh! There you go! There you go! Oh, nice! <laughs> yup! There you go! Taste of your own medicine! What the? Where is he going? Or maybe there's something in the bag. No, no, there's something in the bag, I think. Maybe some kind of clue or something. Oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> I 
Okay. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. Well, there you go. That's what you get. Run. <laughs> Hmm. Oh my god, okay. Wait, what is this place? <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. What's he doing? Is he like dizzy or something? Oh, investment company. Oh, okay. Hmm. What? Whoa! Oh! Oh my God! So this is how they connect. Okay. So is the boss that that guy was talking, uh, you know, like Hawk was talking about in the previous movie. This boss, like, anyways. Hmm. 
Well, I'm sure she's doing this because she doesn't want like if he keeps going alongside her. Like you know, Fujiko is a, like you know it is like everyone's after a lot of people are after Fujiko. She's like uh you know like a what do you call them like wanted person, and a lot of uh, from the police and a lot of other criminal organizations. So if she if he keeps going with her, he'll he'll be in trouble as well. But anyways. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, those all. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it, it was okay. Everything's getting connected now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Trap. Damn, it's broken and he's... Hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh my god! Yep. Uh. Oh my god, yeah, he's gone berserk. Well, <laughs> yep. Okay, there he is. Oops, here we go, the fruit again. Whoa! 
down. Oh! Well, bullets don't work on him, so... Oh! Oh, the gun! Whoa! My God. Uh. 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 Hmm. I'm just, I think she's probably has some plan. Okay. Oh. Whoa. Wait, wait, what the hell? Oh yeah, water. It won't, okay. Oh, so it can produce person. Oh, he's okay. Oh, that would control people's minds. Dry places. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh. Oh. Yep. Well. 
<sighs> well, yeah, it's mental, all mental, emotional, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, as I said, like, you know, he has been kept like a killing machine, you know, hired by um, those people. And he knows nothing else other than killing, so. Great. I, I hope something happens to them. They get their, like, you know, desired punishment. I think. Okay, there you go. Nice. <laughs> yeah, what will you do now? There's no Binkum there to save you. Okay. The the guy is kind of acting suspicious. The other guy. Uh. Yeah, he's acting sus. Oh no, someone's, someone's going to snipe him or something. Wait, who the hell is this? Oh my god. Jigen. Okay, yeah, never mind. Is that yeah? Oh my god, he's back. I knew it, he's using some prosthetic or something. Great. This was just what I was saying, you know, like he could use his gun again if he uses a prosthetic. I don't know. Probably someone else. Who? The police or something? Wait, is he alive? Oh, he's alive. It, okay, I understand. It's a, it's a chamber. It's a, okay. Yeah. He probably went underground and went somewhere. Oh. Okay, it's his dad. There you go. Yeah, but, you know, the heart condition. Okay. Yeah, and that the, it, it was a kid. Yeah. Yeah. That's true, you know. That's true. But <laughs>
Damn. Wow. Okay. Now, but there's still one thing we don't know. Who is the boss? Like, you know, the boss of the boss. <laughs> like, we know who the middle boss is. So he's the bigger boss. Like, like, whose name he was going to say and he got shot. Like, does this have a continuation? Or is this like a... This, this is mystery actually conclude and we get a conclusion of this like I don't like please let me know in the comment section if this like you know if we actually if there's like you know I know like this is at the beginning you know of the Lupin series like you know when uh, Lupin, Jigen and Goemon they barely met they were very new friends so this is this is something that happens a lot earlier so does this thing this mystery gets solved somewhere like who is the actual boss does this get a conclusion in any of the other um what do you call it any of the other uh, uh series now one thing i feel like like you know like in the first one in um jigen's gravestone uh, we saw Mamo in the end. So is the boss Mamo? It might be, you know, like the biggest, the, 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 the topmost boss. So if, if the topmost boss is Mamo, then we get a conclusion after that. Because, you know, uh, the first one that, we, that I saw, the first movie, or the second movie that I reacted to of the Rupan series, The Mystery of Mamo, we get a conclusion of Mamo there. Okay. Okay, is there something else or this, this ends here? Oh, there is something. Rupan is gone. Fujiko is gone. <laughs> with everything, with the car as well, I think. <laughs> oh no, the car is there. Yep, that's the end. All right. Okay, so um, this episode, uh, I have to say this uh, is probably a lot weaker than the other two that I saw, you know, but it, it, it was enjoyable. It was very enjoyable. Like I enjoyed this a lot. Obviously, as I said, I, I enjoyed this type of things a lot more than the normal comedy I, I i enjoy the comedy section of nupan as well but sometimes you need a little more like you know a more what do you call it like some serious stuff as well and i think rupan fits perfectly with these with these type of serious stuff it fits so perfectly like rupan fujiko uh, jigen goemon and zenigata they are what can i say like they are so capable like each and every one of them in their own way that in these type of serious parts and in these type of serious movies their actual uh, talents come like you know we, we can get to see them we get a glimpse of their talents and we get to see how cool they actually are like that's why i'm saying like i enjoy the comedy sections i enjoy the comedy filled rupan as well but these type of things which are very dark and very like you know serious these type of movies are something that I think are definitely needed, at least for Rupan, because otherwise we won't be able to see their actual talent, their actual <laughs> prowess. And uh, yeah, like each episode kind of spotlight, uh, like, you know, had the spotlight on every character. We get Jigen's story where we see how Jigen, you know, is like his talent and his way of handling things going on and Fujiko. So like each ep each episode, each movie kind of shows us how special they are in their own way. And excuse me. And yeah, like that's that's what 
was like and I, I that's why i really loved this and i think um the prequel to all of these which is uh uh, uh the woman named F uh, fujiko mine uh, the prequel to all of this that is when they meet fujiko mine don't they yeah like lupa meets them and that's why i think here like one thing i was able to like you know one thing i was able to like it, it kind of stood out especially in these movies uh for example we can see how jigen and rupan in, in the first movie uh, jigen's gravestone how jigen and rupan are not that much friends as we are accustomed to from the other rupan movies because this is in, almost in the beginning and we can see that like you know their relationship develop as it goes you know we we see their dual work you know their duo how like you know they helped each other their teamwork in jigen's gravestone and then we also get to get in uh, like you get to see goemon as well in, in goemon in action as well where goemon was i remember like there was one scene when goemon said rupan is mine to cut something like that mine to defeat so and I'm, i'm not sure how they met uh, how rupan met goemon but i think probably something happened and they did not meet in the most favorable circumstances so that's why like you know it, it was at the beginning and that's why goemon was like that here in this episode we can see me uh, fujiko is like you know like the way she deals with rupan and um like what can i say like in in i think like as i said the prequel which is uh, the woman named fujiko mine where i think rupan actually meets fujiko for the first time uh that happens and after that this happens so it is very early in the stage that all of these characters met rupan so like i was able to realize the difference in the way fujiko actually deals with rupan in this movie and the all the other movies that i've seen all the mo other movies that i've seen they are all later in the you know show or in the chronology as you call them so the way fujiko acts on in those movies with rupan is very what can i say chill very um what do you call it uh like this this like an other way like they both of them know that they are using each other and both of them enjoy that in their own way and they wouldn't want it any other way otherwise and that's what they like you know like fujiko knows he's she's tricking rupan rupan knows she's tricking fujiko and they kind of like you know duke it out like that one tries to up another one uh, fujiko uses you know uh, as uh, kind of kind of tries to seduce uh, rupan and rupan also kind of falls for that for a few times and then he realizes how blunder what blunder he made and it's like a like playful relationship both of them have and it's it's something that both of them really like i think in a way so <laughs> like that thing is was not here that thing was completely not here it, it was missing from this episode and i was able to realize i was kind of feeling like i was thinking like why this rupan and fujiko's uh interaction feels so professional in a way and then i realized oh this is at the beginning you know when uh, they met and then i was able to realize that yeah after this i'm sure they meet a lot of more times and that's when they both of them warm up to each other and like you know their relationship becomes something like that a more playful relationship where both of them tries to kind of you know outwit each other in a way and like yeah like i i, I can see that here so uh, this is like in the pre earlier stages that's why that whole thing was kind of missing in that in this movie and i understand why and this as i said this really shows how they changed throughout you know rupan fujiko how both of them changed throughout their journey like there were a lot of movies where i just it was completely jokes where like you know where fujiko just <laughs> like tricked rupan in so many ways and rupan was like laughing and he was like ah i got tricked anyways <laughs> moving on <laughs> like you know like this this type of a thing and both of them kind of kind of try to like you know playfully outwit each other like it takes time for that to happen and yeah that's probably why like you know this episode it felt a lot more professional you can call it in a way between both of them so yeah like this this episode kind of like you know increased the the character development i i think like you know especially the last scene where rupan uh, fujiko says that um like let me sleep for a moment because that's i think that's like the biggest show of trust that you can show someone because like looking at fujiko she trusts no one you know she she trusts no one at all and like for her to actually sleep you know in front of someone 
like you know like being completely vulnerable it's it's unthinkable so fujiko saying that let me sleep you know when rupan was there shows like you know like the way she actually trusts rupan now and this i think this is probably the start of their um fun uh, you know quirky type of relationship where both of both of them <laughs> has a gun pointed to their head but you know what like yeah they have fun doing that like both of them is trying to one up one each other and it's just like you know there is like a trust underneath all of that and yeah this episode is probably the beginning of that i don't know i'm just guessing everything at this point so yeah anyways and like um i'll probably like you know on my own i'll check out um uh, the fujiko mine the, the woman named fujiko mine because i really am quite interested in what actually happened before this you know like how did this uh, everything happen i think it's like a 12 episode anime i'll probably check it out later on my own and you know like yeah like anyways okay anyways this episode here uh, or this movie oh boy we kind of get a conclusion in a way and as i said like you know this this movie had was a little bit weaker than the other two like the enemy as i said in the previous two movies the biggest strong factor of those two movies were the villain or the antagonist um i feel this one uh what was his name binkam binkam was a lot weaker not i'm not talking about strength i'm not talking about that weaker i'm talking about the impact that he you know gave us as a villain was a lot weaker than yael and hawk hawk was the biggest one you know hawk had the most impact in my opinion hawk was just like you know like you see him and you fear for your life that type of a villain and he was crazy as a villain he's top notch and after that comes yael and probably after that binkam like binkam really did not like you know threaten me that much at least like it was just like he was a troubled individual and it kind of makes sense in a way you know because here we can see binkam is being kind of i guess forcefully kept here you know like uh, the the boss the boss probably purchased him or something i don't know like you know like it treats him like a slave and keeps him like that you know so he's probably been doing this unwillingly and he has to do it because he has nothing else to do and no other place to go you know and he's like a child as as uh, you know fujiko kind of said in the end like you were just kept because of your duty that's all you wanted to, like you, that's all you did you don't know anything other than killing so the poison the poison that i injected in you was the end of you because you were able to realize that killing is not everything there is something else other than killing as well and that destroyed you and like that's why as, as you know like that's why i think he he this guy is a lot less impactful than yael and hawk because yael and hawk they knew what they were doing they knew what they were doing and they were doing it because they wanted to i guess you know because that that's like their duty or their ideal something but this guy this was guy was kind of like a child he didn't know anything he was just told to do something and that's why he did it he never questioned any other any one of them because he was like a child and yeah and another thing i'm i'm kind of like realizing it now is we can see very much that how fujiko is weaker towards kids you know she is a lot more uh, understanding a lot weaker as as you can say here you know towards kids and since binkam was a lot like a kid she had trouble dealing with him as well you know because in the end we can see she was struggling to actually defeat him because you know like in the end when fuji uh, lupan said that we like you know men we adult ben you don't have a problem with us because you can just use us and throw us away but for like you know like your weakness that is kids you had problem with them and that's why like you know like she wanted to end this whole binkam like you know chapter she wanted to actually um i don't know like release him from suffering or something that's probably what she wanted to do and that's why she decided to actually fight him because she could have just ran away and you know like not get involved in this whole mess but since he wants she wanted to keep um what's the name of the kid um jean no that, that was his name wasn't it yeah the kid uh jean 
since he she wanted to keep Jean safe from all these problems, you know, so that they don't come back targeting him. And since she wanted to, like, you know, uh, I don't know, probably uh, settle the score with Binkam as well, she decided to uh, keep moving forward. And that's why she probably had a lot of trouble dealing with Binkam because he was not like you know he was he was not a what do you call it like an adult man he was a child mentally and you know everything was new for him so yeah this really shows like you know how both of the Binkam and Jean was kind of like the same I guess in a way both of them were like kids and I don't know but it's probably something like that I feel like all right anyways okay so here um we see god uh what was his name randy sorry randy godfrey was the other guy's name uh randy uh randy and you know uh gene like you know, them they were they hired um, um not they but uh, randy hired fujiko and now fujiko's actual target here was to um, i don't know make uh let me let me see let me see the end like, it was like a trick that he play, she played. She tried to take all the money from um, uh, Randy, but she was unable to do that. Because of Jean, you know, because Jean's uh, love, as Lupin said, like uh, Jean's um, conviction to get revenge. Okay, here it is. Okay. Okay, Ruban says, uh, this is all a big drama. What do you mean by that? Randy stealing 500 million, blowing up his house and all his evidence. He went overboard. And here's where we see like um, how they tricked, you know, like how Randy at least tricked all of them. Awful. Uh, the, okay, it's like a flashback here. And we see like there's like a little chamber. I'm guessing there was a tunnel inside it and she probably ran away from there and like appeared somewhere else. Okay, Rupan says there was no evidence that Randy died. <clears throat> it was your plan to make everyone think he died, wasn't it? Now here's one thing, here's one thing that I was really surprised about. I thought it was actually Randy's plan to trick everyone. But the thing that Rupan says here is that it was Fujiko's plan to make it seem as if Randy had died. Now... <laughs> Okay, uh, let's just see. Okay, um, and then we see Randy coming back to Jean, you know, and like, yeah, Jean's happy. Okay, Rupan says, but you intended to con Randy out of all his money. Yeah, that was her plan. That was her initial plan. Okay, now we see the flashback where Randy uh, says, Fujiko, once you get away and uh, safely meet me here in an hour, he gives him here's the thing um i i kind of missed this in the beginning but then i realized it um it's written west third street silver's bar and fujiko goes to the golden bar <laughs> i completely missed that in the beginning you know <laughs> but yeah it makes sense now so that was like her plan her plan was like randy thought that yeah like I'll meet Fujiko at the silver spot. He probably went to the silver bar and was waiting for there. But Fujiko here to trick, Ra not trick Randy, but to get the information about uh, the, um, the treasure, uh, not treasure, sorry, the money and uh, the password. She took uh, Jean to the golden bar, sat there for a few minutes and made it seem as if Randy is not coming back. And she Try to actually, like, you know, say that, oh, your dad is not here. So, Jean, can you please tell me what the password is? She was trying to go in that direction. Here we go. Okay. And we're, we're, being seeing, uh, we're seeing the flashback now. Um, Fujiko says that he won't come in. Probably. Okay, here it is. Rupan says that. You, you got Randy's kid to think he's dead. So that you can get the password for the deposit box. That was our plan. I miscalculated two things. Okay, so, yeah, okay, so let's see. I miscalculated two things. Binkam's skills as an assassin. Yeah, Binkam came there. That was his skill as an assassin, you know? Uh, and that's how all the problems started. 
and the love of a son who wanted to avenge his father. Yeah. Okay, but here again, like Lupin kind of says the other portion here, other, other perspective. He says that, but the kid's surgery money is now stolen. That's pretty cold-blooded. Oh, I don't think so. Randy should now realize he never, uh, he should have never left Jean alone. Yeah, he was so focused on saving Jean that he foolishly exposed the boy to danger. Now, I wholeheartedly agree with this, you know. I wholeheartedly agree with this and um but you know what still now what are they going to do about the operation i think i don't know like uh, it kind of sucks thinking about it that yeah he he probably will i don't know what you can even do in this type of situation like what do you do even like he saved 500 million not obviously I, I doubt uh, he'll need everything for the surgery as as they said like if he wanted a few money to keep to like you know for themselves as well to run away from all the people who's going to come for them maybe hire one or two bodyguards as well that was the money I mean, i'm guessing he would probably use half of the money for the operation or something and half of the money he would keep it for security purposes and everything so yeah that was their plan so like even if it was half of the money, two fifty million dollar, like how do, how are you able to even? I don't know. I don't know how what this will happen. And like, I agree with Fujiko. Like you know, like this. This is probably a very harsh way to actually uh, teach uh, Randy that he should not have actually exposed um, his kid to danger. Because thinking about it like this, like he was doing all of this for Randy. Uh, uh not randy sorry uh for gene and that was the only way that he could do this but if you think about it in another way like the danger that he actually exposed his son to like even before the surgery he could have died some way or the other you know because people will be after them and they won't leave the kid alone even if the father runs away and goes into hiding they'll drag down the kid some way or the other and if, if, if the father took the kid with him, then obviously the kid is in more danger. So to save him, he actually exposed him to more danger, which was even more dangerous and which could have actually threatened his life. So that is actually a harsh way to teach him this lesson. And Fujiko is completely correct. But the thing that I'm feeling sad about now is that what is he going to do after this? Like, you know, how, what, what will he even do? How will he actually, um, uh, you know, find the money now one thing i kind of remember that happened you guys remember that that scene where we see that uh gene was like oh like i need my backpack he goes and then there's like the picture in it you see fujiko actually taking some money and putting it in the bag i think some money she was able to recover like that and that is probably with gene now you know because the backpack was with gene so i think that way she was probably able to like, you know take some money and jean probably has that small amount of money now with him and hopefully that will help in the operation i don't know how much it actually needs for the operation but hopefully it helps them to you know i don't know like in some way or the other it will probably help them and i'm you know that's nice of fujiko actually okay um all right, Rupan says that something more valuable than money. Okay, no. Yeah, he was so focused on saving Jean that he foolishly exposed the boy to danger. <clears throat> Did you realize something as well? Yeah. Something more valuable than money. <laughs> You're joking. Yeah, like, more important than money. I think, yeah, she was able to realize that. And... <laughs> You guys remember the, the scene where uh, Fujiko was kind of saying that's why I hate kids. They all, like, you know, they're selfish. They want people to take care of them and they don't, aren't able to do anything for themselves as well at the same time. Like, that was probably, uh, like, because she was able to realize her only weakness, that is children. She was able to realize that. And that's why she was frustrated because she could not do anything at that situation. She was frustrated at her own weakness. And that's what Rupan is saying here. Rupan is saying that, yeah, you also probably realized your own weakness. 
uh, something which is more uh, you know important to you than money like that is kind of like a source of a weakness I guess you know like something that is actually important to her than money so like yeah now she says that nah me I'm you're joking if not you had no re reason to kill Binkam there you go here's another thing like this this again shows that Binkam probably reminded her of a child and that's why she wasn't able to leave him alone just like how he was she wasn't able to leave Jean alone and you know like she knew that if she if she had somehow tried to save Binkam he would not be able to actually uh, survive because somehow the other the organization or whatever would track him down and they would keep making him do stuff like this or they would just dispose him off like that's that's how his life would go on and he he's probably only the only, probably the only assassin out of all the two assassins three assassins we saw who who's probably not even aware of the fact that the stuff that he's doing you know he's not aware of what he wants to do himself like he knows nothing he only knows of taking orders and executing them so you know like that's kind that kind of makes him what can i say an exploited person you know like that's him he's he's no assassin he's just someone who has been exploited and he's like a child that's why uh, fujiko wanted to end the whole binkam chapter there and decided to end like you know end his misery there you go his uh, rupan says if you had no reason uh, if not you had no reason to kill binkam after all you have the money I can always rely on all the men who'll never forget me, right? Yeah, like even one, like, you know, she's saying that even <laughs> like all the people that I can use, all the men that I can use, like I can always rely on them. Like you. <laughs> okay. So yeah. All right, and then like you know, we see how Fujiko says that let me sleep. And again, as I said, like this is probably the one of the most um, biggest show of uh, reliance you can call that or trust. Trust. I think trust is a better word. Uh, biggest show of trust that R R Fujiko can ever show anyone. And because you know, sleeping is the most vulnerable portion, and you know she she decided to sleep at that moment. So yeah, that's like the biggest show of trust from Fujiko to Rupan. All right. And uh, yeah, that was it. In a way, this was very well done. And one way I think this, this episode kind of shines, which is the underlying meaning department or this, uh, what do you call it? Like the hidden meaning, meaning type of a way. Like this, this, this episode, uh, this movie has a lot of layers on, on top, one top of the other. And in that way, I think this probably shines. Like the first episode, like it shined because of the storytelling. Uh, I'm talking about uh, Jigan's gravestone. The storytelling was fantastic. I loved it. The second one was because of the villain. It shined. And this uh, movie, if I had to like, you know, say one thing, it's probably the most, uh, what do you call it? The more, um, the way it had so many layers on one top of the other and how like you know the psychological department you can call it like you know like uh, psychological uh uh part like part of fujiko's mind like how she actually sees the world and what is her weakness and all these things you know like her way of thought and what she thought about this whole situation i don't know what i'm even saying but <laughs> you know i think it it shines in that department here like Fujiko obviously like uh, we've all seen like all the movies Fujiko is one mysterious character like we we actually don't know what she wants how her mind works when she'll betray you when she won't when she'll actually be concerned about you like we know nothing about it and it's all a mystery this whole thing so actually like you know peeking into Fujiko Mine's mind here is probably the best part of this movie like like we, we see a glimpse of her actual character behind that mask that she wears in front of everyone and like i think that's the best part of this movie like in like in front of a kid that mask was nothing she wasn't able to 
put on her her mask and that shows how like you know that shows her actual character a glimpse of her actual character behind that mask and that is the best part of this movie like that the mysterious mine fujiko we are able to kind of glimpse into her actual character like it's fantastic and fujiko mine's lie we can we can obviously understand what the lie was you know like in a more literal sense you can say the lie was that she you know like lied to um kind of tricked you know randy and jean in a way in a more literal sense but i guess in a more philosophical sense or in a most like uh, you know like yeah philosophical or psychological way sense i guess not psychological what am i even saying in a more philosophical sense you can say that the person who fujiko lied was probably herself because she 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 lied to herself that yeah like like this doesn't bother me but it actually does bother her the whole thing with the children uh and yeah like binkan again like you know like binkan is an not a what can i say is an unfortunate character basically she he is he he has been exploited all his life and i guess i don't know where or how he ended up in this situation and you know probably someone sold him or something you know and they probably i don't know experimented on him and did something i guess like the whole like you know that the, the the poison that he used to use and it activated because of his sweat like fujiko kind of explains that in the end so it doesn't work when you're wet and uh, yeah like we don't know who captured him and what happened what was his past but it was an unfortunate one because he knew nothing other than killing and that whole thing of you know like fujiko kind of seducing him and like th that scene fujiko himself herself kind of seemed shocked when he started like you know uh, like like you know when he said that uh, like you know like you're strong why are you uh, following their rules like that scene and that scene when he starts like you know clawing his head fujiko herself was very much shocked at that moment because and then she says that oh you're like you know you're pathetic or something like that she says because she's able to realize that this guy is not like the all the other adult men binkam is someone different he's like a child she was able to realize that at that moment and that's when like you know like uh, what can i say her priorities changed completely she decided i'm i'm sure she decided to actually Uh, deal with Binkam and not let him get more like you know like 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 let him out of his misery you can say that I guess and uh, I don't know like it's probably something like that and then you know that's why she actually confronts Binkam and tricks him and as Binkam says that what is the poison that you put in me like it's it's like. and then she says that what did she say it's a a prodigy called love i think that's what she said yeah and yeah that's that's like show that shows like it was just that binkam was a child he he didn't he, he knows nothing other than killing and that moment probably made him start liking fujiko and that was what was the end of him so yeah damn sad like he he is like you know like he's an unfortunate character binkam like i like as i said like i i felt kind of uh, like you know seeing yail and hawk they were terrifying in their own way but seeing binkam all i can feel for him is pity and like you know like he's he's just an unfortunate character that's just it so yeah get a happy ending kind of i guess by the end of it and uh yeah so i guess uh the whole uh plan of tricking everyone that uh randy is dead was i think it was probably the trick was made by randy himself as he decided to run away but fujiko foresaw that and you know like when he gave uh the silver rooster or whatever what was the name something like that and said that we'll meet here in one hour you know he was able to foresee what he is going to do and so he decided to trick randy and like you know uh like trick gene uh, as well and get the password but she was unable to because 
as Rupan said, the love of a son wanting revenge was greater. Right. And I love the action sequence here as well, like the way Fujiko moved, like, you know, like the whole action sequence was fantastic. Like, damn. So, yeah, that was it. Another great movie. I loved it as well. And um, as I said, like, and I'm not sure if this has like an actual conclusion as to who the uh, real boss is. Uh, I'm not sure, but I think it is a Mamo. And if it is Mamo, then we do have a conclusion, I guess, like the mystery of Mamo, where it we actually see what happens to him. But if it is not Mamo, then I don't know who it is. If you guys have any idea about that, let me know in the comment section. So that's it, guys. So um, that is my reaction. Oh, okay. One thing I, I forgot to do that. Um, the voice actor of Binkam, it's Mamoru Miyano. I'm quite sure of it. Let me. Yep, it's Mamoru Miyano. <laughs> I I can recognize that voice anywhere. I love Mamoru Miyano, like, you know, oh my god, like, he's one of the best, like, he's the top voice actor, at least for me. Um, like, uh, Okabe Rintaro, um, Tasumi Kotaro, like, I love the way he voice acts, and it's such, like, in a fun way he does that, and it's, it's, it's so great, I love it. So, <laughs> like, by the end, I, I was kind of thinking, like, where have I heard this voice? And then I realized that it's Mamoru Miyano, I was like, okay, <laughs> all right. Okay, that was it. So, okay, next week, um, I'm going to react to the final movie that is left, I think, which is called Rupan 3, the first. And I think this is a um, CGI movie. And I think I've seen glimpses of that this movie, like, you know, here and there in YouTube videos. And I, I, I know that this has one of the most fantastic CGI. Uh, I don't know if you call that CGI or something else. I'm not sure. You know, that 3D thing that they do. Um, I think it's one of the best. Like, I've seen glimpses of this movie, like, you know, from uh, YouTube videos and everything. And it looks fantastic. I can't wait for next week to actually react to this. Like, this will be great. So, next week, uh, Rupan 3, the first. I'm going to check this out. And I think, um, is this where they meet? Um... I don't know, I, I feel like this, like Lupin 3 the first, this is probably the episode where all the characters meet or something. I don't know, we'll see. Like, I'm not sure about that, but yeah, we'll see. Next week, Lupin uh, 3 the first, I'm going to react to it. So if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to press the like button and subscribe if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed. Uh, I plan on starting Lupin uh, the anime from part four after next week. Next week, Lupin, uh, I'll react to Lupin 3 the first and then the week after that, I'll start from uh, Rupan 3 part 4 of the anime series. And yeah, I'm, I'll talk about that in the next episode, uh, in the next week. So yeah, if you guys are interested, then be sure to subscribe because I will definitely do that. I'll react to the Rupan movie, uh, Rupan anime series. And uh, comment down below anything you want to say, what you liked about this movie, like, you know, anything else you want to talk about, I'll definitely check them out. And yeah, that's it, guys. So thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you guys next week with another Rupan movie reaction. Until then, goodbye and have a nice day.